My name's Mars Harlan. I live in uh, Terre Haute, Indiana, and I farm south of Terre Haute about eight miles. I've lived here all my life. Uh, it's the only job I ever had. I never took a paycheck from any place else but this place. Well, it is, it is a full-time job. Uh, it's not an eight to five job by any means. Uh, during the uh, spring, you know, we start the, when the sun comes up and we work till dark. It's just, it, it's a good lifestyle. It's been, been good to me. My name is George Higginbotham and I've lived on the farm down there for 69 and a half years. That's how old I am. I've been there ever since I've been born. Right on the Wabash River, you can, uh, spit out the back door and it's within 50 feet of my back door. Oh, the river's very powerful. You can't control it. It will flood in the, in the lower bottoms there every year. Last year, it stayed up for better than 60 days during the cropping season and uh, we lost a lot of crops. Well, the marginal land in the river bottoms, it's actually very good soil. If you could just keep the water off of it, it it's some of the best soil in the world. You just can't count on it every year when uh, the river comes in and, and takes your crops out. That's what makes it marginal. It's very risky, very risky ground to farm. Uh, just uh, not a guarantee you're gonna get anything every year. One of the strategies that the Nature Conservancy is, is pursuing is trying to restore natural habitats in these floodplain lands. So where you have marginal farm ground, if we can take those lands out of production and restore natural habitat, you get a significant reduction of the nutrients in the river. This area plays a big role in the health of downstream communities. The Wabash River only contributes 1% of water flowing into the Mississippi River, but that water contains 11% of the nutrients that make it to the Gulf of Mexico. This is a very disproportionate amount of nutrients contributing to the dead zone in the Gulf. Each acre of restored floodplain habitat removes nutrients from the river each year. As those acres of restored land add up, this reduction in nutrients will be significant. The restored land will also protect communities from floodwaters and pollution and provide ecological benefits. To make this work possible, we're working with farmers, landowners, foundations and businesses that all share a commitment to improving water quality and ecological health. So the whole supply chain is at the table and we're all looking at the same endpoint to make agriculture more sustainable. It's good for the environment, it's good for the farmers, it's good for TNC because it helps the nutrient management goals across the whole Mississippi Basin. It's good for us because it helps to address the impact from our supply chain. So put all the partners together and what they all have to offer and it's a very successful project creating shared value. So at this site on the lower Wabash, we're going through and planting trees. We're using a number of different oak species and several other types of trees and planting them closely enough together that within 15 years or so, we'll start to get a closed canopy of forest. And that forest along with the wetlands will all work together to reduce the nutrients that are, that are reaching the river as well as the sediments. To do anything of of magnitude to start to make a difference, you have to really stitch together a lot of conservation practices on this large floodplain to actually start to see some results. Ultimately, you gotta have a habitat economic progress balance, and I think that's what this does. It just creates that balance. Well, you wanna be a good steward. We all have responsibility to do what we can. I think all farmers realize that. It's very important for any farmer to think about the impact that the land has on the river and uh, on the wildlife. And I think it's a good idea to check this practice out.